Corduroy by Don Freeman. Corduroy was a bear who once lived in the toilet department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for someone to come along and take him home. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear with green overalls. One morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight at Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, Mommy, she said, look, there's the very bear I always wanted. Not t today, dear, her mother sighed. I spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't, he doesn't look new. He lost a button to one of his shoulder straps. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I lost a button, he said to himself. Shouldn't I? I'll go and see if I can find it. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Cor Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf. He began to search everywhere for, on the floor for his lost button. Suddenly, the, he felt the floor moving under him. Quite, quite by accident, he had stepped onto an escalator, and he went up. Could this be a mountain, he wondered? I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor, and there before his eyes was the most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Cordray gasped. I've, I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. He, won he wandered around, admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he, s he said. I've always wanted to sleep on a bed. And he crawled up onto a large, thick mattress. All at once he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried. He tried to pick it up. But like the other buttons it, on the mattress, it was tied down tight. He yanked and pulled with both paws paws until pop off came the button and off the mattress corduroy toppled bang a tall floor lamp fell over with a crash corduroy didn't know it but there was someone else awake in the store the nightman watching and was going on his rounds on the floor above when he heard the crash he came dashing down the escalator now who in the world did that, he exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. He flashed his light under the sofas and beds until he came to the big bed of all, where he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator. He set him on the shelf in the toy department with all the other dolls and animals. Corduroy, just waking up and the first customers came in the store in the morning, there looking at him was a wide, warm smile, was the same little girl he had seen the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night I counted what I've saved up in my piggy bank. My mother said I could bring you home. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. No, thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight into her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair, a chest of drawers, and alongside the girl-sized bed stood a little bed just right size for him. The room was small, nothing like an enormous pass in the department store. This must be a home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a new button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you will be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. 
"'You must be a friend,' said Corduroy. "'I've always wanted a friend.' "'Me too,' said Lisa, and he gave him a bit, and gave him a big hug. The end.